Hey everybody! Welcome back to the LDRS Creative Studio. It's Thursday night tonight. I know that because Alan put the word right in front of me. <laughs> you would think I couldn't get it wrong, but I do. This time I got it right, thankfully. Anyway, oh my goodness gracious, I hope you guys are doing great tonight. I hope you all had a wonderful day. Um, it's always so nice to see so many familiar names, I would say faces if I could see you, but Alan was kind of reading through some of the names of, of people that, uh, that, were, that are here tonight. So hi Liz, hi Cindy, who else was here? Everybody's here. I, I know Stephanie's Kathy, here. Kathy Marvel. Kathy Marvel, hi. Liz, yep, yeah, Liz is here. Margaret. So Margaret, Margaret Chapman? Yep. Awesome, so it's so nice to see you guys here, yay. Um, let me see, anything new going on with me? You know, hey, do you guys watch, if there's any of you that watch, um, that watch The Voice, that's like the one reality show that I watch is The Voice. And, um, there's, what? I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> no, I've just fallen in love with a new, not new singer. I, I actually have one of her songs already. I just didn't realize how fabulous it was. Um, Lauren Daigle, she sang, she was one of the, one of the special, you know, guests that they had performing. Oh. And she did an amazing song called Hold On To Me. And she is absolutely wonderful. And I'm like, oh my gosh, her voice. I love her voice. And then I started thinking, boy, I know that voice. So I looked up her name and sure enough, I already had a song on my phone by her. And I just, I love her. And so Alan will attest to this. I've been playing it. I've been playing her like over and over I, and over and over. I can't take that song <laughs> <anymore. laughs> I tend, I don't know that, you know, raise your hand if you do this. When I fall in love with an artist or a song or something like that, um, usually if I fall in love with a song, I will go through the entire album and I'll buy the songs that I like. But if I fall in love with an artist, I, I will rotate kind of a list of things. And I'll rotate it not only until I learn every single word of every single song, but I rotate it until I get absolutely sick of it, which can take months. <laughs> So now I'm hooked on Lauren Daigle. So if anybody's looking for some new music, um, it is, I think it's considered contemporary Christian. Um, she's a con contemporary Christian artist, uh, which I don't normally listen to, but I just, I'm in love with her voice. Her voice, I don't know what it is. I mean, she, she's one of those people, I, in my opinion, you could sing any doggone thing and I would listen. All right, so anyway, the reason we're here is card making. So we're going to do something fun tonight. We're actually going to do a slimline. But I'm going to work with a slim line that I haven't worked with. I don't think I've worked with it yet, at least not on video. I haven't. And um, it's from our February collection, and it is the Pretty Patterns slim line uh, die set. So that's going to be the star of the show today. And I decided to make a window card with it. So I'm going to kind of walk you through this, this die set if you don't already have it um, to kind of show you what it can do. And then I pulled a whole bunch of other stuff too. And I literally just die cut a bunch. I did a little bit of stenciling and I'm going to do that stenciling for you tonight. Um, and I, I literally stamped and die cut a whole bunch of things and we're going to see what fits and what doesn't because that's just kind of how we do it. So, um, Alan, Misto Hunt, if you will do me the favor of switching to camera too. All right, here we go. Let me get my glasses on. This is the Pretty Patterns Slimline, <coughs> excuse me, and you can see I've got stuff in mine, but anyway. This is a pretty pattern slimline die set. It has eight dies in total. And it has some really, really beautiful, um, li uh, little, it's like a little pattern. They look like little hearts. They could be like little arrows too. They, they're just so pretty. So we have all this pretty detail. So we've got two outer dies here. The largest one cuts um, your card topper. Um, our slim lines are eight and a quarter by three and a quarter, the largest die. Then we have a second nested die here that actually has a cut line on the edge and then some beautiful double stitching. We've got two different, two separate circles here that, um, that can nest. There's an outer cut line on each of those plus um, some really pretty little detail around. And then we have uh, two squares here. The largest square actually has a cut line on the inside and the out, and then the smallest one has a cut line on the outside. So you know, however, depending on how you want to layer things, if you want to cut the centers out of things and so on and so forth, you can do that with those. So they're really fun for creating layered, uh, layered, um, like little layered pieces um, on your cards as well as little windows and stuff. But this is the one that, this one is the one that I really wanted to kind of feature today. This is actually two dies here. So 
The outer die here has a beautiful little scallop edge to it. It has a cut line on the outside. It does not have a cut line on the inside. So it's actually going to cut um, like a little frame that doesn't have the center cut out. So, you know, you could stamp a sentiment, whatever you want. This die that's on the inside here does not have a cut line on the, on the outer edge there. This is one that you can set into your onto your paper absolutely anywhere. So if you want to put it on the little rectangle, the scallop rectangle that you cut, or if you just want to put it onto any card, it's going to cut a, a little pocket, so to speak, like a little door. So it has a it has a cut line on both sides as well as the third side here with a little bit of a kind of a scoop there. So it helps you to kind of lift it up. And then on the fourth side there, it's going to score. And so just to kind of show you what that looks like. I'm going to show you my little stash of stuff here. Let me see if I can find it in all my goodies. Yep, it is two dies. I can take the whole thing apart. Um, but this is actually, you want to zoom into camera three. This is what it cuts if you nest them together. So let me take the die out. And show you what we get. You know what, Alan? I think I'm getting hives. <laughs> I'm getting hives on my face. Um, can you go get me a Pepsi or something? Because yeah. Alrighty. Let me get this off of here. Uh, actually, let me just take them all off. All right. We're just gonna clear this whole thing off of here. Sorry about all the popping. Let's get this one off. Ah, this one wants to be stubborn. There we go. And then the last one. They move the packaging out of the way. All right, so this is what I'm talking about with these two. So this one will cut the beautiful scallop. Now, if you cut the scallop, I actually have another. Okay, thank you. Sorry, you might hear me chewing on a allergy thing. It'll be good until the last shot. <laughs> Okay. Last thing we want is for me to break out in hives on camera. That's not pretty. And we have to be pretty. Okay. So this is what this die, the first die cuts. All right. It doesn't cut anything out of the center. You can see a little bit of an impression of the edge of the die, but the blade is only on the outside. So that cuts that. If I, and that's, that's actually what I did. I cut this first with it. If I lay this die into the center of this one, like I did this one, all right? So you lay it blade side down, make sure you have the score line up at the top where you want that fold to be. You lay it just like that, all right? Run it through, and then it's going to cut on three sides like that, and it creates a little window. And then this edge right here, up here is scored. I don't know if you can see that on camera. So that's how you can create really cute little windows so that was really what I wanted to work with today was I wanted to create a card that had a little window like that on it. And then here you can see the other dies that are in the set. Actually, let's go like this maybe. I don't think I can fit them all on camera here. You can see how this is two dies here. I'm just trying to fit them all in here. Okay, so that's everything. Well, plus this. All right. So let's move those out of the way. Next up, for my stamps, I thought it would be fun because people have asked, people who have had the strawberry patch, Alan, actually, let's go back to camera two. All right, people, and you know, people who have the strawberry patch, and keep in mind, I've used mine a lot, so that's why they, they look so black. Um, so if you have the strawberry patch, I've had a lot of questions when the Berry Happy came out. And people asked, can you use the Berry Happy with the bears, the Berry Happy bears with the bears from the strawberry patch? They are the same character. They are the same size. So yes, you can use them. You can even see when I put them side, side by side that they are sized together. So I thought tonight that since I have, you know, said yes, and I've gotten the question a lot, I thought I would do a card where I actually combine characters from both of these sets. So you can actually see them together how cute they are and how well they work together. We're very, very careful when we 
when we illustrate and size our characters so that you can, like these, these are our standard size characters as opposed to the pocket pails. So we're very careful to size things the same from set to set so that you can mix and match your characters. And we do try and use, uh, you know, the same characters in different sets, you know, throughout the years so that you can do exactly what I'm going to do. You can mix and match them. And so again, you can take something that's brand new and you can mix it. We did this on Tuesday. You can mix it with something that you already have in your stash. And so now, I mean, I made X number of cards with Strawberry Patch. I can make X number of cards with Berry Hoppy. And when I mix them together, I mean, you know, ex <clears throat> excuse me, exponentially, the combinations I can get are ridiculous. All right, now I need a drink because I have my allergy stuff stuck in my throat. <coughs> oh my God. Oh my goodness, I'm a mess tonight. The show must go on. <laughs> the show must go on. Isn't there, isn't there a song like that? <laughs> okay. And then I also grabbed two stencils. This comb flower is one of my new favorites. So we worked with this um, a couple weeks ago and we did something really, really beautiful and kind of a, um, a lilac color. And so we're gonna do something a little different with it today. And then I grabbed my, my standard, my standby rainy day and we're gonna do something with grass as well as um, the top clouds here. All right, so oops, let's get started. You've already seen these two pieces. Let me get the dies pushed off there so I have room. Um, you know, this future product you haven't told anybody about is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. Alan's over there taking a look at um, future product that I haven't told anybody about, and he's commenting how cool it is. I think he's just trying to tease you guys. <laughs> Alan, will you switch to camera two again? It is. All right, three. I'm, I'm getting them all confused. Okay. I want the close-up, but I don't want to show everybody everything I've done yet. All right. So let me move all this stuff off to the side. All right. So first thing we're going to do is some blending. Now, I told you I wanted to work with this die. And so I've cut a strip. Let me use the other side because I have something on it. This is my blending card. My blending card for anybody that is new today is Strathmore Bristol Smooth Surface. This is what I use whenever I'm doing color blending. I like to have the 9 by 12 um, uh, sheet size because then I can use it for just about any size card that I want. I just have to trim it. So this is what I'm using. And I need a little scrap piece of paper. So here's a scrap. Now I trimmed it so that it's just slightly bigger than the, um, the height of the die. And um, so I'm going to be doing, all right. I'm gonna do a little bit of blending on this and I'm gonna grab a couple of colors. So I'm going to grab, basically my idea is I wanna put clouds up at the top and grass at the bottom, all right? This is Marina Madness Hybrid Ink. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite color to use for both clouds and for water. Um, so that's what we're using for that. And then I grabbed four leaf, which I think is so cute for grass. I wanted the colors to be bright, but kind of muted versions of these bright colors, if that makes any sense. So the first stencil we're going to start with is going to be rainy day. And you'll notice I left this piece of paper here, I left this the, the full nine inches in length because I'm going to be cutting along this with my dies. I'm actually going to be not only using this die, but I'm using my largest square here, and then I'm going to do another square with it as well. So I wanted to make sure I had enough length. Now, my stencil is only six inches wide. So we're gonna, we're gonna make it work for the extended size. So I'm gonna grab my blender brush for my green. I'm gonna position, there we go, position my stencil. I've got my four leaf green here. 
Now I'm using, this is one of the things about these stencils. I love this stencil because you can do so much with it. We have clouds, like a cloud border up at the top, like cloud edge. If you want to do solid clouds, you have that option here as well. You go like that so you can see them. We have raindrops in all different sizes. And then we have grass. So this is really a fantastic dye for a uh, stencil for a really great combination of uh, backgrounds. All in one dye or a stencil so you don't have to keep buying, you know, you have to buy four different stencils for it. So I'm going to pick up some of this four leaf. Let me move this over. I always brush off first so I get any excess that I don't want. I don't want to get a really, really harsh blend when I first touch down. So there you go. There is our green. Look how easy that is. Now to extend that, all I'm going to do is move my stencil and just kind of line it up as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. I always start off the page and come up toward the stencil. All right. So now we have that really pretty green. So that's it. That's how quick it is to do grass with the stencil. So I'm going to do a quick little clean on this with my little towel. And then next up, I want to do clouds. And so I'm going to use, my favorite part of the clouds to use is the edge. Because I can kind of make them billow, and I like doing that. I think it's fun. So I'm grabbing Marina Madness. Maureen. Maureen Madness. Maureen Madness. Marina. No, Marina. All right, so I'm going to get some ink, get the excess off of there, and I'm going to do this kind of light. I might have to do it a little bit darker for you guys to see it, a little bit darker, because, you know, we have, like, the bright light in studio, so I typically have to do things a little bit darker for you guys, but I'm going to go in really gently so I don't go too dark too fast. All right, so I don't come all the way off the edge there because my stencil kind of came to an end. See the cloud there? Now I'm just going to line this up. I have a little spot here where I can line up my stencil. And now I can come in and finish off that line. So this is a really good way to extend your stencils across a longer um, a longer piece of paper than, you know, than the length of your stencil. Now I'm going to do another couple of rows and I'm going to do this kind of offset a little bit. So instead of putting my stencil right underneath it, because I don't want the exact same look over and over again, I'm going to offset it just a bit. I'm going to leave some white space in between. Get some more ink. And then come in kind of gently and do another layer. Try and leave some white in between them. There we go. I'm going to line up again. And I'm not pushing really hard. I mean, I'm really doing this very gently, but I am making circles. There we go. And I'm going to do one more. I'm going to offset it again, just a little bit. I'm going to make that a little bit lighter than I did the others. There we go. Actually, let's put this away before I get it on anything. Wipe up my stencil. So now you can see that I have 
that extended um, border there. Now the next step would be to line up this die and I'm, I lined it up like at the base of it down here at the bottom so I got more of that green and then I have my square. Okay, so run this through the die cutting machine and you end up with, well, I forgot, I need this piece too. So you make sure that the little scoop part is down. So this would go like this. There. So you run that through your die cutting machine and then you end up with this piece here and then you will get, let me see, where is it? Make sure I have the right one. This piece here. Notice it's in two pieces, all right, because this square has a blade on the outside as well as on the inside. So it cuts that center out and that's fine. I can pop that center up on foam if I want or if I just want to lay it right back in there just like that and put that on my card like that, then I can. And it's actually quite nice because you can see that little bit of a line, that little bit of a frame. After I do that, then I would then run it through another time. I would move my square die over here and I would run it through another time just to get a little, another little square like this one. All right. So that's all I did to get these, these three pieces. All right. I'm not going to have Alan cut that because I already have that done. So that's that. The next thing was to run this one here just through um, and die cut a piece of white because I want to pop this up on my card. I wanted to have that dimension. I didn't, I'm not putting it, I'm not putting the window right through my card. I wanted it to rest on the top. So I could have set this in on my card and, or actually this piece, I could have set directly on my card uh, topper and cut through it, but I didn't want to do that. Um, I wanted to have the whole thing popped up. So I cut another one just so I could layer it behind it. So that's where we're going with that. Those are my pieces. So next up, I'm going to set these aside. So now you know how I did those. The next thing is, do I have another piece in here? Yeah, and I'm running out of my Bristol. Oh, oh. So here's another thing that I did. Um, I'm going to work with, this is going to be the die that I'm going to work with. All right, so I'm going to trim, I'm going to lay this on here just so I see the width of it. And I'm going to cut my paper to be, because I don't like to waste the paper because it's not, it's not cheap. So I'm going to cut this to three inches. So it's a little bit bigger than the die, which makes it easier to cut. Do we have any questions from anybody? Make sure, make sure you know, if, you know, if you want to ask questions, anything, I mean, anything is fair game. The only thing is, if people want a impendable, they better get one soon. Oh, Alan wanted me to point out, um, we're actually, yeah, the last ones today. yeah, he wanted me to point out the stampendable. You guys have seen me use this. If you look in, if you look in our, uh, we're out of them in the store, right? We're out of them. Yeah, we we're out of them. The yeah, we, we're out of them, and we have actually shipped the last ones out to, um, to stores that we have right now. Um, so... Be yeah, it's it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. So if you know if, if you if you want one of these and there's any retail stores that still have them, I would jump on it. Um, we've sold how many have we sold? Like I don't even five thousand of these. Um, yeah, they 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 go quickly. Um, and we do have more coming in, but it's probably going to be maybe another month before we have more in. Um, just because of shipping. Um, so yeah, if you want one of those and you happen to find a store that has them, I would jump on that. Okay. I'll go over what it is if you're not familiar with, with what it is. I'll, I'll be, I'll show you that shortly. Okay. 
So next up, I'm going to use this stencil. This is, I'll go like that, is that better? There's a reason why we put it on this color. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the coneflower stencil. This is a six by six stencil and I'm gonna be using it on a piece of paper that's wider by, than six by six. So um, all I'm gonna do is just lay this down over my paper. And this is my, my Bristol. So I'm gonna lay this on here and I have two brushes. I have one for yellow and one for pinks. I actually made a little mistake and I touched that one down into my pink, but I've cleaned it off pretty well and it's good now. So I'm gonna start with my yellow. And the yellow that I'm working with is banana cream because it's so bright and springy and gorgeous. And that's really my goal with this card is to have bright, springy, gorgeous. So I'm gonna position my stencil so I get a little bit of you know that yellow, the centers of the flowers, you know, all around. And I'm gonna grab some of this yellow and I'm not gonna to worry too much about brushing off first with these, but I'm just gonna tuck that right into the center. You know, I can see where the centers of the flowers are. And if it goes outside of that area a little bit, I don't care, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this is really free form and it's just so pretty. So here we go, there's my centers. I've got the yellow in there. I think I got them all, at least in this section. So now I'm going to set this yellow aside and I'm gonna to go to Lipstick Jungle. My favorite pink, I love this color. So I'm gonna pick up some of my Lipstick Jungle. I am gonna brush off a little bit because I don't want it to be really, really strong when I come in here. And I'm gonna go very gently all around I'm not going to go right up to that edge because I don't want to have a line on my um, on my card topper. This one I don't care about. I can go up to this edge here because um, this is the edge of the paper, you know, edge of the card. But I'm not going to go up to that edge on that side because I want to bring those. I'm going to be extending it and moving my stencil down. And I'm not concerned with, you know, whether or not I go up over some of that yellow area a little bit. If it, you know, if, if I blend those colors together a tiny bit, I don't really care. I just want this to be free form and just really pretty. Really soft, gentle, and very, very pretty. So there we go. That is the first half. Now I'm gonna slide this down. I broke my rule earlier and I had both the pink and the yellow open and that was when I put the yellow brush into the pink and I, so I'm covering up my pink. So <laughs> I'm moving it over. Huh? What color is the brush used for now? Well, I cleaned it off as best I could um, just, just by brushing off. No, it's, no, you can see it looks good. It looks fine. Oh, okay. Um, I just brushed it off. And it's fine. So I'm getting, I'm removing the excess pink off of my stencil right now because I don't want to make orange, you know, when I combine the colors, when I come back over the stencil with yellow, I don't want to combine into that, that pink. So now I'm going to contend with this area here where I kind of want to blend them both together. And so I also want to position things so that I get my yellow kind of distanced apart. So I have pink right here and I have pink there. So I don't want to put that yellow right next to the, that yellow. So that's kind of what I'm doing here is just kind of having an area, I'm trying to see where I can put these so that I can move them together. All right, I think that's going to work because now I just have a whole bunch of pink here before I go to yellow and I think that's going to work. I'm going to tilt this a bit. There we go. Um, you know, you just have to look at the pattern and see, you know, where you think it's going to work. Uh, so let me put the yellow down in the centers. And again, I'm not brushing off with this yellow because I want a lot of yellow on it. There we go. So there's the yellow. This is the, this side is sticky. I must have sprayed this side before. 
Okay, so I'm going to put my yellow aside and now I'm going to grab my lipstick jungle, which is my pink. Make sure I have this in position. I'm holding it in place and brush off with that pink a little bit. And now I'm going to come up around very gently with that pink. My fingers are sticking to the stencil because the stencil is a little sticky. I must have had it turned the other direction when I worked with it last time. Because I think I sprayed it with my tacky spray stuff. There we go. So I think that's going to be nice and light and pretty. Let's see how we did. Ah, it's gorgeous. Look how pretty that is. Stunning. It's gorgeous. Okay. So now I can put these aside. I do want to clean this off a little bit. And I'm just brushing this with water. That's all I'm doing is brushing with water. There we go. Put this away. The nice thing is with the stencils is you can use both sides. Doesn't matter which side. There we go. All right. Go ahead and put that away. And then from here, this is where I would take this die. Isn't that pretty? I don't even mind. I did a little bit darker at first and a little bit softer there. It really doesn't matter. Um, I would lay this die, this is the, the second largest die, would go right over just like this, run it through the machine, and that's what gives me this right here. This is the one that I did earlier. All right? So once you die cut, that's what you get. Now the other piece that I die cut is the largest outer die. That's this one. And I just cut it out of, this is actually my Nina. Classic Crest um, Solar White, 110 pound. This is this is heavier. It's thicker. That's what I, I like to die cut this one. This paper, um, it just feels really nice, and it makes the cards feel really nice, and it's a beautiful kind of milky white. I love it. Um, and this has those that pretty little design on the sides. So I wanted you to see some color through that instead of just putting it on a white card base. So because this is eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. I chose a, a blue. This is just from my little scrap bin. And I think that it works really well with the Marina Madness. So I just trimmed this in my paper trimmer down to eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. And now it really, when I place that behind there, it really shows off that pretty um, pattern that's around the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting things together. So I'm going to adhere these two together. And this, oh, let me get my trusty, I always, I always like to have something in place when I'm lining up corners because I don't want this whole thing to drop and then, then I've lined it up wrong. So I line up my corners first. Make sure that everything is straight. Start to adhere that. And now, because I had this in the way, it won't fall. See how it doesn't, it doesn't go? Now I can move that and I can guide it gently. But I've learned that if I don't put something there, inevitably it's going to, whoops, inevitably it's going to slip out of my hand. And, um, and I'm going to, going to guide it down. It's going to be crooked and I don't want that to happen. So there we go. Now we have that piece done. The next piece is going to be that beautiful, um, I wonder if, do I want to pop that up on some foam? I think that would be pretty. I'm going to, no, because I'm going to have these on foam and I'm going to have snow. We're just going to leave the background, we're going to leave the background more flat. So I don't want to get too many layers on foam. If anybody has any questions, get them out there. There we 
go. Let's see, let me center that. Let me look at the camera. All right. I mean, already that looks really pretty, doesn't it? It just looks, you know, like spring. I just think it's gorgeous. All righty, so next up, we've got all these little pieces here that I cut and let's see I'm gonna go ahead I don't know if you can see the score line on this Can you see the score line I think you can see it better maybe on the white but I'm gonna go ahead and fold this little door up just a little bit on that score line because I like to get it started so I know it's gonna work all right, so this is going to go here. The plan is this is going to go in the center here. And then I'm planning on having, is this the inset for this one? Yep, these are going to go over here. And then these are going to go over here. That's my plan anyway. So I do need to get a sentiment. And so I want the sentiment to be through the little, little door here. So the sentiment is going to go on this piece. And the sentiment that I want to use is you make me very happy. So the sentiment's going to go on this piece. I probably, what I would probably do is, and if I, cause I wanted to stamp the sentiment, you know, for you guys while we were doing this, oh my gosh, look how dirty that is. Anyway, I would probably stamp my sentiment first on a piece of cardstock and then lay the die over and make sure it was beautifully centered because it's much easier to stamp first, I think, and then die cut it. Um, but it's not going to happen today. So let's do this kind of right in the center there. You make me very happy. See how that's going to lay over there. Make sure it all fits. And I think it looks really cute. You can't see that, but I think it looks cute. I'll show you when it's done. Okay. And I'm going to stamp this with my Raven Hybrid ink because it's such a deep, dark black. I love it. It's really beautiful. That was one of my struggles when I used to design um, projects for other companies. I didn't have a really, really good, you know, really deep raven black. And um, so when I was putting together the hybrid ink colors, that was really my hunt was uh, for a deep, deep raven black. And that's why it's called Raven. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this inked up. Grab my Stampendable. And let's see how we did. It's perfect. Absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous. Um, the Stampendable, you just saw me use it. It helps you to apply even pressure, um, you know, when you're stamping so that you get a good, you know, crisp stamped image every time. Um, and it does that so that it, it does it in a way that it takes the pressure off of your hands, which is really nice. You know, so there's no more... Um, you know, there's no more of this pressing and pressing. And, you know, when you do that, there's only pressure like where your finger is pressing. That's why you have to keep pressing all over like that. But with the Stampendable, it's really, really easy to hold in your hand. It's incredibly lightweight. It's small. I have small hands, so this is not really big. If you're, you know, if you wanted um, to hold on to the wider um, rim of it like that, you can do that as well. So you have two options for how you handle it. And then we have a quarter inch um, felt um, pad on the bottom. It's a firm felt pad that helps to transfer that pressure all around through to the stamp. And um, that's what gives you that, that even, you know, and beautiful crisp stamp every time. So um, it really is nice. I have arthritis in my hands. You guys have heard me mention this over and over and over again. And that really saves my hands. When my hands are tired, it's very easy for me to use as well. What? Oh, <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and adhere these two pieces together, okay? So, let me get my smaller 
tape. What am I going to do when this one's out? I need to get another one. I don't want to get tape on this piece here, so uh, I have to be careful. Help if I use the right side of it. Is there a term for that? Maybe hide the sentiment? Is there a term for yeah. hiding the sentiment? Is there a um, not that I'm aware of, but that doesn't mean there isn't one. No, I don't know. Did somebody ask that, or are you no, asking that? I'm it? asking. Okay. I do not know if there's a term for hiding a sentiment. There we go. And just fold in any excess that you have there. Get these lined up. There we go. Very careful to line them up so they are near perfect. There we go. And so now when I open this up, it's easier to open up now that I have it adhered you know, to something. And so now I have that little window. See how cute? Super, super cute. What, Alan? Sue Steven said the term is surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and, hmm, I think, how am I going to do this? One, two, yeah, I think I will. I'm going to go ahead and get this lined up and take out these centers. But I'm going to line this up so I put everybody where I want them to be and I have things equally spaced. centered. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put this on some foam. I'm going to leave those two pieces where they are. One's a little higher than the other. I'm not worried about that right now. I just want to make sure that I have them centered right to left. All right, so we get some foam on there. All right, all right, now here is the trick, right? I want it centered right to left. Try not to get my head in there. Oh, I've got to rely on the camera. Oh. Right to left and top to bottom. I'm so weird about having these things centered and straight. Oh, it's not centered. That's why you don't press it down. Uh, I'm ending up with it too far, too close to the bottom. I can't get my head over it. I'm trying to, my, I am putting my head over, over it apparently. I just looked in the camera. Sorry about that, everybody. All right, I'm hoping that's going to be good enough. All right. I know that's like my weird stuff. I like things to be perfectly centered. I can't help it. So I'm going to put foam on these pieces here, I think, and have that popped up just a little bit. I think that'll be really cute. A little bit of dimension on those. One, two. All right, make sure I have the right one. That looks right. Position this exactly where it needs to be. You know what? I'm going to lay this one down first. Ah! I probably shouldn't be doing this. I should probably use liquid. Oh well. I think I'm getting tape all over my stuffs. All right. So, does that look right? I think that looks right. Make sure it's straight. There we go. And then I can put this piece 
in the center. Go like this. I think that's it. Sorry, your camera's not frozen. It's just me making sure everything looks good. There we go. Excellent. Look how cute that is. Very, very cute. All right, next up, this side. A little bit of adhesive on all four sides. And then, so on this side, I have about an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna try and do the same thing over here. And line it up at the bottom best I can. There we go. Alrighty. Everybody's so quiet today. How can you tell? Because I don't hear any questions. Do I hear foam? I do have foam on there. All right. Are there questions? You're not putting them out to me. There we go. I think that's good. Let's see how we do. I think it looks good. Okay, so we're getting there. We have this really cute little window. Now we're going to be doing some characters. Let me show you all these little characters that I got because they are so, so cute. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but lately I've been very much into coloring my little characters as though they're just little white balls of fluff <laughs> so I've got mice in here little white mice and I've got little white rabbits and little white bears and they're so cute I do have blue birds though because I wanted to have some color this is what I do not only because I love the way it looks but I do it because I'm typically short on time and I don't want to spend a lot of time coloring and I also want a really soft look. That's, an, that's a third reason why when, when I, I will do it. But I thought it would be really pretty on this really soft spring card to have the characters just be very, very, you know, light balls of fluff. So that's kind of where I'm heading with it. So I'm going to go ahead and put foam on the backs of all of these guys here. Because they're all going to be popped up. So I can use all these little scraps that I have. Here's some more scraps. Foam. I know we're gonna need another foam roll. So we'll just cut a chunk and then start trimming it, putting it on my characters. There we go. can turn this do some smaller pieces that one's kind of overhanging a bit and I don't like it so we'll pull that one back up and there we go all right did it work yep good all right on that little bunny and now on the strawberry. Now, I don't know if all these pieces are going to fit, but we're going to see. All right. I did choose characters that would be looking kind of left and right so they can look at each other, face each other. And then I very purposely chose this guy because I thought it would be cute to have him facing the front. So let's place him later. This one I wanted to be left or right facing, so he's definitely going to go here. Let's put him in the grass here. What? Who's asking where do you get the glass mask? Oh. You know, you should do some designs for those. 
put people's name on And put them out there? That's, yeah, not, that's least, not a bad idea. At least, you know, I, I like this one. Maybe somebody would like this. Alan is suggesting that I do some designs for the glass mats. And people can grab them. Yeah, just so that, and put them maybe up on the website or something so you could download it and use the designs if you wanted. Where'd my tape go? So if you're interested in that, let me know because we, we could do something like that. Where did you, do you know where you got it? Um, I don't know offhand where I got it. I'd have to look it up. Stephanie is the one who told me about it, actually. So Stephanie might have the link to it. I don't know. She might have it handy, but um, do I like that, like that? Yeah, we're going to use that that way. Um, but yeah, she's the one who, she sent me the link originally for it. And um, so she might have that. If not, if you remind me later, Alan, I can put the link out in our, in our Facebook group. Actually, I think it was maybe shared in our Facebook group already a, a long time ago, a while ago. There we go. So that's looking really there, cute. First question. What Copic color do you use for the shading? Ah, I, I use the C's. I use the cool grays. So I've got C, let me line them up here. There's C00, C1, and C3. Those are the three colors that I used on all of my little characters. So I tend to start light to dark. So I started with my C00, just kind of marking where I wanted the colors to, you know, the that shadowing to be. That way, that way I can't screw it up, right? Because it's so light that if I put it where I don't want it, you're not going to really see it anyway. Um, and um, let's see, he's going to go here. And maybe him here. I think I like him. Yeah, I like him running. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so those are the three colors that I used on them. Um, I use the the cool grays a lot when I do this because it has a blue undertone to it, and I just think it's really pretty, really soft and pretty. Um, and it's just nice and springy. You know, if you use a warm gray, it's going to have a brown undertone. And um, that just looks, it just ends up, to me, it looks a little too dark when I use that. Not springy. Like I would use, I would probably use the warm gray more in the fall. I'm going to move this guy over. What, Alan? You made Sharon so it's going to happen because you took him out from there. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of putting a strawberry in here somewhere. Like maybe a little strawberry there. But that might be just too much. Okay. Then this little bird is going to go up here. And then this little bird, hey there, little bird, is going to go. I'm going to put it like over here, maybe. Actually, I'm going to trim some of this foam off because that foam's in the way. So that looks really cute. And then we have to go onto a card card base, which I happen to have right here. So my card base is um, is just uh, it's eight and a quarter. I, I trimmed it so it's exactly the side, the length of my card. So it's eight and a quarter, and then it's three and a quarter plus three and a quarter. So it's by oops. So that is um, by six and a half. So I trimmed it to eight and a quarter by six and a half, scored it three and a quarter. And now we're going to put some adhesive on there, put the card topper on. And, you know, if you want to put a sentiment in the center on the inside of the card, you absolutely can. Um, and then I still have two little characters left over. If you wanted to put, you know, you could put them just kind of like this on the inside next to your sentiment. That could be really, really cute. So you have some characters on the inside. I'd probably remove the foam off of the back of those if I put them on the inside of the card. Okay, let me make sure I get this lined up right. Get my edges lined up. There we go.
There we go. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> Look how cute. All ready for spring. You make me very happy. Oh, how sweet. I love it. Love it. It's just adorable. 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 I don't know about you, but I love the bears, the mice, the bunnies, the birds. It's just so, so cute. You know what, Alan? If this little mouse, if he were a chip, if he were a chipmunk, this would this could actually be well, I was gonna say this could actually be our backyard, but they, we don't have we don't have bears. We have deer. <laughs> Some I I didn't think forward enough. So it's like our backyard. It's like our backyard, deer, but yeah, it's like our backyard, but not. So <laughs> You know, sometimes you start down a thought, and then as you approach the end of it, you realize that you probably shouldn't have started. <laughs> so we have a yard. <laughs> so we have a yard, and there's animals in it, just not like these. <laughs> you want to switch the camera? If I have to. Yes, please. <laughs> Seriously, sometimes you start down a thought, and you realize that, you know, Dead it's a dead end. It's not where you should have been going. All right, so there's our card. I hope you like this. This is so fun. I love interactive cards, and I just think putting these little pockets or windows or doors or whatever it is you want to call them, I just think they're so cute to put on there. It's a nice little surprise for somebody, you know, and then you can still put a sentiment on the inside. Um, if you wanted to, depending on how you built your card, if you wanted that to go all the way through to the sentiment on the inside of the card, you could certainly do that too. It's completely up to you and however you want to build it. So these are really, really fun. I love, I, I, it's the, the pretty pattern slimline and that's, uh, I just love it. I think it's so much fun. PPSL. PPSL? That's our code name. That's our code name. Yeah, it's just so cute. All right, so <coughs> speaking of PPSL, I think it's time for a giveaway. Should we do a giveaway of that? The pretty pattern slimline? Uh, no. No? I don't think people want that. Thing. People don't want it? Everybody has it already? I hope so. <laughs> all right, we're going to do, I, I, I can't hold it up because I took all the dies off. <laughs> but this is, what, this is what it looks like when you remove all your dies from your packaging insert. Um, so... Drum roll, please. Who's the winner of the Pretty Pattern Slimline? Oh. Raise your hand. Do you want it? Who wants it? Get your, get your, get your name, a comment, or something out there. Come on, come on. Who wants it? You want it? Everybody say yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah. Said they want it Nobody said they want it. No. All right. Oh, we got a name. Katie Judy. Katie Judy, you are the winner tonight, and you get the Pretty Pattern Slimline die set. Katie Judy. Is that right, Alan? I, you looked over at me like I said it wrong. That's the way I would read it. Okay, it says Katie Judy on it. <laughs> that's how your name is showing up in what, in YouTube, or I don't even know where. But anyway, congratulations, Katie. You won the Pretty Pattern Slimline die set. So, in order to to claim your fantabulous prize, I need you to please send us an email at customer service at ldrscreative.com. We need your complete name. If your name is Katie Judy, then <laughs> by all means use that. Um, if you have a different last name, then by all means use that. And give us your complete mailing address as well. And we will get your prize right out to you. So everybody, thank you so much for joining tonight. Um, we've got a beautiful um, holiday weekend coming up. And um, so what? More dumpster work. Is that the beautiful weekend? Dumpster work. <laughs> I was thinking barbecue. Oh. <laughs> Let's go with that. Yeah, I think he's thinking it's not Labor Day, so we have to work. Anyway. You guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Uh, try and see some family and friends if you can. Get some relaxation in. Have a barbecue. Have some wonderful food. A little something to to drink and, you know, be it, you know. Fluids. <laughs> well, be it alcoholic or non-alcoholic, whichever way you want to go. I don't care. Just keep yourselves hydrated. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks so much. We will be back on Tuesday night, right back here in studio at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, have a wonderful weekend and uh, have a happy Memorial Day. Bye, everybody.